Two years ago, Google brought us one of the most revolutionary smart home devices, the Google Home Mini. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the next generation, the Google Nest Mini. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get the Nest Mini set up, and we're gonna check out all of the new things that it can do versus the original Google Home. So this is the second generation and the Sky Edition. It also comes in a charcoal as well as a coral, and you can get it in chalk as well. So over here on the side, we can see that it has better sound. You can group this with other speakers that you have in your home. You can control TV, lights, thermostats, and thousands of other devices with your voice. And now you can make calls, set timers, check the weather, and much more hands-free. And then over here on the side, here are some of the services that you can link with. YouTube Music, Spotify, Google Calendar, Google Maps, Google Duo, Philips Hue, GE, and many, many more. So inside the box, there is the Sky Google Nest Mini. We have a let's get started guide, some security and privacy information. So this is going to teach you how to get it set up and everything that it can do. Now on the power adapter, you can see that it no longer is the micro USB cable. This is a 15 watt power adapter that will power the Google Nest Mini. Now looking at the Nest Mini versus the Home Mini, it is very similar in size. The main difference is the bottom of the device and how it is powered. So here you still have the mute switch, so at any time you can flip this so that no one can hear you, like these minis cannot hear me right now because they are orange. One of the biggest changes to the design of the Nest Mini is you have a built-in mount, so you no longer need to go out and buy a mount if you want to mount this. Now to mount this, you will need to get an anchor as well as a number eight pan head screw, and then you can screw that in, and then you would be able to easily mount this, and then you'll need to change the direction of the volume buttons, and we'll get to that in a minute. So let's get this plugged in and get it fully set up. Hi, to get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. Now to get our Nest Mini set up, we need to download the Google Home application. Now this is available on Android as well as iOS devices. Before we go into the application, a few things you can do to make sure that the setup goes smoothly is make sure that you are currently connected to the Wi-Fi that you want to set up the Nest Mini on, as well as turn on your Bluetooth. Once you have done that, now we can head into the Google Home application. Now, once you head into the app, you're going to select the plus in the top left side of the screen. Now there are a bunch of options here, but we are going to select set up a device. And then here we are going to choose set up new devices into your home. Next, we are going to choose the home that we want this to be connected to. I only have one home, but maybe you have multiple. Just choose home right there. Now, if you have multiple people in your house, is how this works is you will have one person that will set this up and then you share your home with somebody else in the house so that they can have access to all the controls as well. So here it's giving me some different options of things that it found. So I could set up the Nest Mini. There are other devices right here as well, but we're just going to select Nest Mini and then select Next. Now during this process, our Nest Mini is connected directly to the Wi-Fi network. So that means I don't need my phone to be around for it to still have access to the internet and receive questions and play music. That can be done all on its own because it has its own direct internet connection with our Wi-Fi. Now next we have the option to automatically share device stats and reports to Google to improve the Nest Mini. So I'm gonna say yes, I'm in. And then we need to choose what room we want this device to be in. So I've gone through and created many different rooms. You do have an option to create new ones down here or at the very bottom, you can add your own custom room. But since we are in the office, we are just going to select office. Then I'm going to select next. And now we're gonna choose that Wi-Fi network that we want this to be directly connected to. So it does support five gigahertz, so I'm going to choose that option. And then I have the option to remember the Wi-Fi password, so if I set up other devices, it will automatically add my Wi-Fi network. Now that we do that, now it's going to finish that connection directly to the Wi-Fi. Now internally, the Google Nest Mini is very similar to the original Google Home, but it has some big improvements. One thing is this now has three far-filled microphones versus the two microphones on the old Mini. This also has Bluetooth 5.0, so your Bluetooth connection is going to be much better. And it now has a dedicated machine learning chip built inside. So that means it's going to give you faster responses whenever you request something from Google. Now here it's going to talk about using the Google Assistant on the Nest Mini. 
We're gonna select next here. And now it's asking us to activate voice match. So voice match allows the Google Nest Mini to know the difference between you and other people that you have in your home. You can have six different voices linked to your mini. So I have already done this in the past and here I'm going to agree to the voice match setting. It's only stored locally on my device and now it is getting that ready. Because I've already set up voice match, I don't need to say anything right now, but if this is your first time, it will ask you to say a few commands so it can learn how your voice sounds. And now it's giving the option for us to agree to personalized results. So that means it can give us reminders and calendar events and other information right from the Nest Mini. So I'm going to agree to that so I can have the best experience here. Next, we are going to link the music service that we would like to use. So depending on the country you live in and local service support, you may have different options here, but here I could choose YouTube Music or Google Play Music, Spotify, Pandora. Some of these do require a paid for service, but you can use free radio service as well. So I'm just going to select next there as YouTube Music is selected as my main device. And now you have the option to link a radio service. So it's giving me the option to link Sirius XM and I could set up my 90 day free offer there. Offers again are dependent on your country as well. Now next we're going to link a video service. So I can use my Nest Mini to play shows off of Netflix right onto my Chromecast device, which is a really cool functionality. So I already have that set up. I don't use any of these other services, but I'm gonna select next here. And now it is asking us to get started with voice calls. Now with the Nest Mini, you can make voice calls to anybody else in the world that has a Google Duo account. So this feature is really cool. If you've never used Google Duo before, it's really simple to set up. All it needs is your phone number and you are good to go. So we're going to select continue. I have previously set up my Google Duo account. So there it's showing my phone number. If it's not showing the right phone number for whatever reason, you can select use a different phone number and choose the one you want to use. So then I'm going to select next and now we are all done. So we've set up different devices, services, our Wi-Fi, as well as voice calling. So we're gonna select continue and now we're gonna learn a bit more about how the Nest Mini works. So here right on the top, we can then play and pause by tapping the center of the Nest Mini. Next, we can change the volume. So I can tap on the right to increase the volume or I can tap on the left to decrease the volume. Now, if you do mount the mini, there is an option to reverse those so that it's not backwards when you're trying to change the volume. It also says that when your hand gets close, it will illuminate the lights on the mini, so we'll be testing that out soon. And then you have the mute switch on the back, so if you don't want the mini to be listening to anything you're saying, you can turn on the mute switch and it will turn orange on the top, showing you that it is mute. All right, now the office speaker is ready. I'm your Google Assistant. I'm here to help. To learn a few things you can do, continue in the Google Home app. Now it's going to tell us how to use Google Assistant with inside the Nest Mini. So there are two ways in which you can talk to the Google Assistant, and that is to use the keyword, which is Hey Google or OK Google. And you can see there when I use that word, it activated. Now you'll notice that whenever I say those commands during this video, I will mute that in the video so it doesn't activate any speakers that you have within your home. Now going down, we have some other options. So here we can play music. We can get answers to questions. We can get stuff done. We can control our Chromecast as well. So we're going to select finish setup. Now that we have our Nest Mini set up, let me show you some of the most important settings you need to know about to get this working properly for you. So on the main page of the Google Home application, we're now going to head down into the room that we set it in. So I set this up in the office and here I have the office speaker. So I'm gonna open up the office speaker. So right here I have the option to adjust the volume. So maybe I'm in another room, I wanna turn it down. I can come into my app and quickly turn it down. And like we saw before, I can change the volume right here. And then I can also cast my audio. So say I'm using Facebook and I want the audio to come through the speaker, I can cast the audio from my Android phone and it will play over here and play any sound that comes through my phone. But then we want to go up here, we have an equalizer. So if we want to increase the bass on here, we can do that by changing the bass level here and we could change the treble as well. But now we're gonna go further into the settings. Now I have a video that covers every single one of these settings, but I wanna go over some of the most important settings you need to know for the Nest Mini. So first we have alarms and timers. So let's say I wanna set a daily alarm to go off every morning. Hey Google. Set an alarm every morning at 7 a.m. Your alarm set every day at 7 a.m. 
So now it has added that alarm. If I go into the alarms and timer section, you can now see that I have that alarm set for every single day. So if I wanna cancel that alarm, I can come in here and then turn off that alarm and you can set multiple different alarms. Up here, you also have the option to adjust the alarm and timer volume. So if you find the alarm is too loud, you could come in here and then tomorrow it won't be as loud. Now let's try a timer. Hey Google. Set a 10 second timer. 10 seconds. Starting now. Now when the alarm goes off or the timer, all you need to say is stop to stop that alarm. Stop. And there the alarm has stopped, much better than having to activate the Google Assistant to stop the alarm. Now next we have groups. Groups allow you to place the Nest Mini in a group of other Google Home speakers so that you can have the same music play out through your entire home. So if we go into the group section, here I want to create a new group and we're going to add this to a group called mini group. Now on the home page, we're gonna scroll down until we find groups. So here I have all the different audio groups within my home, and you can see I have the new mini group. If I open this up, I have the volume controls there, but I'm going to add more devices to this group. So I'm going to select settings, and then I'm going to select choose devices. This allows me to choose other speakers that I have within my home. So here I have the other minis right here. So I have Coral and I have Google Home Mini. So now I can select save and all of those speakers are within this group. So now that I have my mini group all lined up, I can go into the settings here and you can see that I can adjust the volume on each of these speakers. If I want to change one down a little bit lower, you can see it adjusted over there. So these are how you individually change the volume, but if I change the volume here, it's going to increase the sound on all of them at the same time. Let's play some music. Play my New Jamps playlist from Google Play Music on Mini Group. Sure, playing your Google Play Music playlist called New Jams on Mini Group. If you don't want to activate it by voice, you can actually go into a cast supported application, tap on the cast icon, and now you will see I have the Mini Group as an option. Now I can come in here and place music. And you can pause the Nest Mini just by tapping on the top of the device. Now scrolling down a bit further, we have a reverse device control. So if you decide to mount your Mini with the mount included on the back, you will wanna come in here and reverse the device control. So right now, if I press the right side, it's going to turn the volume up and then the left side will turn it down. But if I select reverse device controls, now when I press the right side, it's going to go volume down. That's in case you have it mounted like this then the device has the proper controls. Next, we have paired Bluetooth devices. So if you have another Bluetooth speaker in the room, you can actually connect the Nest Mini to that speaker. Again, this does support Bluetooth 5.0, so you're gonna have some really good quality going to the other speaker. Here, you could choose a default music speaker. So right now, if I ask it to play music, it's just going to come out of the Nest Mini, but I could come in here, and every time I ask it to play music, I could have it go through the Mini group. So now that I've selected there, if I ask it to play music, it's going to come out of all three of those speakers at the same time. Here you have a default TV. So in this room, I have a Chromecast Ultra, so I can actually select the Chromecast Ultra to have it always play my videos there. So if I go in and ask the Google Home Mini to play something from Netflix, it's always going to go to the Chromecast Ultra. Now here we have more options. So this first one is personalized results. So with the Nest Mini, you can have different things such as calendar, contacts, and reminders all be linked through your Google account. So if you want those reminders here on your Nest Mini, make sure you turn that on. Next, we have notifications. So tonight, it's going to notify me to take out the trash. It will show a little white dot on the Nest Mini, and that is indicating that I need to ask Google to see what my reminder is. So I can say, hey Google. what's up? And then it will tell me my reminder. Next, we have ultrasound sensing. So if your Nest Mini is in a darker room and you're trying to find the controls to change the volume, when you reach your hand close, it's automatically going to brighten up so that you can change the volume and know where those little dots are to adjust the volume. So there you can see the dots on the side, so it makes it easy to find. Now, right now, this feature has not fully rolled out, so I've not been able to get it to work on my Nest Mini, but I'm really excited for this feature because I have a Google Home Mini right now in my daughter's room, and when I'm in there at night trying to adjust the volume, sometimes I'll go and reach for it and I'll end up not knocking over the mini or pushing it off the table because I can't find it. So this will allow me to quickly see where the volume controls are, but this will allow me to quickly change the volume without having to fiddle around to try and find the device. And here we have duo calling settings. I'll get to that in a bit. 
There's one more setting that's currently not showing up under the Nest Mini, but I do want to mention it. So if you have two Nest Minis, or in this case, two Google Home Minis, you can actually pair them together so that they are a stereo pair. So let me show you how to get that set up and what that will actually do. So I'm going to head into the settings of the Google Home Mini right here, which is the charcoal version. And then I'm going to select settings. And down here, I have the option for speaker pair. So I'm now going to set these up in a speaker pair. Now a pair is different from a group. For best use of a speaker pair, they do need to be in the same room on kind of the opposite sides of the room. So we're going to select next. Now it is asking what two devices I want in the pair. So this will only work between the same type of device. So I have my Google Home Mini and it's showing the other Google Home Minis I have within the home. So here is the Coral one that I'm going to select and then I'm going to choose next. And now this one is making a sound. So that is going to be my left speaker. And then it will automatically choose the coral as the right. Here it is asking me to choose home and then where I want the pair. I'm going to put it in the office and we'll just call it office pair. And now it is pairing the speakers together so that they become one speaker. Now going back to the office, you can see that I no longer have coral and Google home mini as a speaker choice we now just have the office pair. So they have been combined into one speaker. You can also see that when I change one, it will change volume on the other at the exact same time. Now that these have been paired up, whenever you play music, it will act as a stereo pair. So that means certain sounds are gonna come out of this side and certain sounds are going to come out of this side. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use a podcast from 20,000 Hertz where they use the stereo sound to explain how this works. Now on your end, if you are wearing headphones, this is going to give you the best example of what this would be like in real life. Now, as I begin the clipping, I'm gonna bring the clippers closer to your ear. Very close to the right ear. Follow me as I move around the back of the head, to the left ear, and up and over the top of the head. Oh, you can get the same effect better with the electric razor. I'll first bring it close to your right ear. Is it perfect? And around the back. And on to your left. Like this. Now a pair can also be included in other audio groups as well. But let's say we want to disable a pair. We just go into the pair settings and then we scroll down and right here we have speaker pair. And then we can either change the network that it's on or here we have the option to separate the speaker pair and we're gonna separate them. So now these are acting as their own speaker once again. Now let's do a speaker test. The speakers in these are the same size but the Nest Mini is said to have 40% more bass. Now I can definitely tell there's been some great improvement on the Nest Mini versus the original Google Home Mini. What do you think of the new sound? Let me know in the comments below. Now that we've gone through those important settings, let me show you the capabilities that you can use with the Nest Mini without having to have your phone around, touch the device, or anything like that. So if you are wondering what this can do, all you need to do is say, hey Google, what can you do? Try one of these. You can say, charge the robot cleaner, or what's on my calendar tomorrow? Let's try that one. What's on my calendar tomorrow? There are five entries tomorrow. Here are the first three. At 8 a.m., you have Claire Preschool. At 8 a.m., you also have Adele School. Next, at 8.15 a.m., you have Workout. I can tell you more or tell you the rest. That's it. Thank you. 
While you are talking to the Google Assistant, you'll see that the lights light up. If you want it to stop at any time, you can tap the top to cancel the command. Now, if you have other Google devices in your house, like a Chromecast or here on the TV, we have a Chromecast Ultra, you can use the Google Nest Mini to turn on and off the TV, or you can have it play different videos. So I can say, hey Google, turn off Chromecast Ultra. Just like that, it turned it off. If I want to play a video over on the Chromecast Ultra, hey Google, play Tech with Brett from YouTube on Chromecast Ultra. All right, playing Tech with Brett from YouTube on Chromecast Ultra. Google just released its full So there, it turned on the TV and started playing. Pause. So there's some really cool functionality with the Nest as well as a Chromecast device. Now there are really an unlimited amount of things that you can ask the Google Assistant. One that we found recently was pretty fun. What's the longest word in the English language? According to Wikipedia, the longest word in any of the major English language dictionaries is numino ultramicroscopic silicovolcanoconiosis, a word that refers to a lung disease contracted from the inhalation of very fine silica particles, specifically from a volcano. Medically, it is the same as silicosis. So that was a pretty long-winded response, but it gave me so much information. And I wanna know, did you know that word? Um, how do you spell that in the comments below? Let me know. The Google Assistant now has different voices that you can use. So you can go into the settings and change these, or you could just ask it a few different commands. Hey Google, talk like a legend. Hi, John Legend here. I lent my voice to your Google Assistant so you can hear me do things like answer your questions, brief you on the weather, and tell jokes while the regular assistant voice handles the rest. Let's have some fun. So now John Legend will take care of some of the responses and other things will be done by the regular assistant. So I guess he sings pretty good. Sing me a song. Here is a song I'm singing just for you. It's what you requested, so I'm following through. I really appreciate you singing that song for me. So now let's dive into some of the other cool things that you can do with the Nest Mini. Now let's try out playing music. So we already set up our preferred music service at the beginning, but at any time you can ask it to play music from whatever service that is supported. Play my New Jams playlist from Google Play Music. Playing your Google Play Music playlist called New Jams. So here it's playing the music right on my Nest Mini, and I can change the volume like this. I can also say, hey Google, set the volume to three, and it will change the volume. Now, if I want to move this music to all of my speakers in that mini group that we set up, I added my Nest Hub, all I need to do is say, hey Google, move this to mini group. Sure, I'll play it on mini group. Oh, it's a little loud, let me change the volume here. So there it was able to move the music from the speaker to all of the speakers at once. And on the Nest Hub, I now have full controls of the volume as well as the full group volume as well. So then some of the other really cool things that you can do with the Nest Mini is being able to call other people or you can actually call other people within your own home. Now there are two ways to do this. Now I live in the United States and I can make a phone call to a phone number in the US or in Canada. If you live in the United Kingdom, you can make phone calls to other people that live in the United Kingdom. Now to be able to call, all you need to do is activate your Google Home and you can call businesses or other contacts. Now let's make sure that our contacts are set up correctly. So here in the Google Home app on my Android phone, I'm going to select my contact up here and I'm going to select manage your Google account. And I'm gonna scroll over here where I find people and sharing. Under this section, it will show different contacts linked to my Google account. So I wanna make sure that contact info from your devices is on. That allows all my contacts to be backed up to my Google account so the Nest Mini has access to all of those. Now, if you have an iPhone, there are a few different ways to do this. We're going to head into the Google Home application. We're going to select the settings. And then here, we're gonna scroll down all the way till we see settings again. So here you have more settings. Now we're gonna to go to the services tab. And then we're gonna to go to the voice and video calls. Now under here, you have the mobile calling option. Now on Android, as well as iPhone, this is where you can actually go in and change your phone number. So if you make a call from the Nest Mini, it's actually going to show as unlisted, unless you come in here and you choose what phone number you want it to show. So here I could show as an unlisted number, or here I can add my own mobile phone number. Now, once I have done that, my phone number is linked and it's showing up right there. 
Now down here, I have the option to upload my contacts to my Google account so that if I make a phone call with the Nest Mini, it will know who I'm talking about and be able to call them. Now it's requesting permission to send my contacts to Google. Now, every time I open back up the Google Home application, it will resync those contacts and it may take some time for them to show up to the Nest Mini. And now it says it is done uploading. Now that those contacts are uploaded to our Google account, we can use any Google Home speaker in our home to be able to make those phone calls. Now, the second way to make phone calls with your Nest Mini is through Google Duo. Now, during the setup, we set that up, but if you did skip that step, go down here into your speaker, and then I'm going to select settings, and then I'm gonna go down here under the Duo calling settings, and then here we can enable it for high quality voice calls. And now I've already linked my phone number, so I'm all set. Now when I activate the Nest Mini and I tell it a phone number, it will use the regular calling, but typically it will usually just use Google Duo to make a phone call. Let's test it out. Now when I make this particular call, I'm going to be calling over Google Duo. So whoever I call, it's going to ring on all of the devices that they have Google Duo set up on. So it would call their different Google Nest speakers, or it's going to call their phone, as well as other computers and tablets that they have set up as well called Brian Automate Your Life. Making an audio call to Brian Automate Your Life on Duo. Call for Brian. It's from Brett Bristow. Hello? Hey, there you are. Oh, hey Brian, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. If you don't know, this is Brian from Automate Your Life. He knows everything there is about smart home automation. I'll take that. So I have a question for you. What is your favorite feature on the Nest Mini? Oh man, I love the new speaker. I think it's fantastic. And, you know, I think it's uh, understated how much value that adds to that device. I definitely notice it does have much more bass and it just sounds very crisp and clear. It's very full now, I think, as a, as a sound versus the old Google Home Minis. Yeah, definitely. Well, I appreciate you so much uh, letting us do this duo call today. If you guys haven't checked out Brian from Automate Your Life, make sure you do that today. Thanks a lot, Brad. Good to talk to you, buddy. Yeah, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. When I'm ready to end the duo call, I just need to tap the top of the mini, or I could activate Google Assistant and say end call. Just like that, we are done. Now, if somebody calls you on the Nest Mini, you would just need to tap the top to answer, or you can activate Google Assistant and say, answer the call. You can also decline the call by holding down on the top for a second, or you can activate the Google Assistant and say, decline. If you have another Google Nest or other Google Home speakers in your home, you can now call them within your home. To get that set up, we're going to go into the settings of the Google Home application. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom, find more settings. Then we're gonna head under services, and we're gonna to go to voice and video calls. Now we're gonna to go to the second portion here, which is video and voice apps. So under here, you have the option to link or unlink your Duo account. And then down here, you have the option to turn on which Google devices in your home will receive those phone calls. So right now I have my Nest Hub, I have my Nest Hub Max, and here I have turned on the office speaker. So if you want those Google Duo calls to come through different devices, this is where you would control that. When I had all of these on, my wife was like, hey, uh, people are trying to call you all the time. So not only was my phone ringing, but all the devices in my home were ringing. So you need to come in here and choose the exact devices you want to receive the Duo calls on. So if you have a Nest Hub Max, you could do video calls. And then here we have the office speaker. So if Brian called me back, I would receive it here on the speaker. Now let's call another speaker that I have within my home. Call the Nest Hub. Making an audio call to your smart display devices on Duo. Hey. Hey, what you up to? Just playing the Switch. Oh, really? Are you almost done with this video? Uh, yeah, I'm just about done. All right, see you later. Okay, see you later, bye. And that is how you can call other Google speakers within your home. Now lastly, one of my favorite ways to use the Google Assistant through the Nest Mini is to control my smart home. So in my home, I have all kinds of different devices set up as you saw in the Google Home application. I have a smart vacuum where I can say start vacuuming and that vacuum will start vacuuming or I have all these lights in this room. So I have different smart switches or smart light bulbs. And so then I can just ask the Google Assistant to turn those on and off. So I can say commands like turn off the office lights. 
And there you can see all the lights in the office turned off. And if I want to turn her back on, turn on the lights. And there it turned all of the lights back on. Now you don't need to specify the room if you have set up the Nest Mini in the same room in the Google Home application as your other lights. But if I want to turn off all the lights in my house, I could ask Google to turn off all the lights and it will turn off every single light. But in each room, you just need to specify turn on the lights or turn off the lights and it will turn off the lights in that room. Now I know this was a really in-depth video about the Nest Mini, but I really wanted to show you how far Google has come within the last two years in creating a helpful home. If you have any further questions about what the Nest Mini or your Google Assistant can do, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to see how to run the Google Home application or see other devices that you can use with the Google Assistant, make sure you check out the videos over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.